Welcome to the Core 80, Core 80, Episode 30. We're looking at a work by Picasso. And um, basically, I want to show you, take a couple days and run through some Picasso work. Um, the guy was a genius. He was a mad scientist when it came to composition, design, storytelling, art making. Um, and he just explored a lot. He, he really used his medium. Uh, I shouldn't say his medium. Let me say his, his skills, his, his composition, his design, his pencil. He really used his pencil and his brush to think through a lot of ideas. One of the things we say at the academy is, um, you know, to work it out. Work it out on paper. Work it out on paper. Take your pencil and go work it out on paper. So sometimes people will <clears throat> want to share a lot of things. And we have to be very careful because every time we make a, a movement, either with our language, our bodies, our art, all of that takes energy, takes effort and energy. And uh, back in the day when I was uh, younger, well... I'll say it because we're going to talk a little about sex anyway. So uh, this video and the next video, get ready. There'll be some sexy talk. So uh, bring your your A game and um, we're going to look at some cool stuff. Uh, so what happens is when we, when we make a mark, when we speak, when we think, when we communicate – it requires energy and effort. And a lot of times what happens is people who don't really achieve, one of the reasons is because they're doing what some people might call mental masturbation. And what they mean by that is they get an idea or something is going well in their life and what they'll do is they'll run off and try to you know share it with somebody. They'll, they want to talk, they want to talk about it or, or tell you about it, right? And what happens is the mind doesn't know if it achieved the goal or not. All it knows is that it felt like it achieved something. And when we share, what happens is um, that energy goes out, that effort goes out. It triggers in us, um, uh, uh, I think it's oxytocin or whatever. You know, we feel like we, we, we achieved something. And we feel good about it. But we really didn't achieve anything. We've actually, it's kind of like, you know, the difference between making love with a partner and masturbating. Because it's kind of the same. But one's, you know, boom. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, and, and what happens is this energy goes out, but it doesn't, come back it doesn't do anything and, and 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 then you end up really robbing yourself uh from uh, um, putting that energy into actually something that's worth it okay so in art it's the same way if if you have great ideas and you're just sitting around kind of talking about them then you're just mentally masturbating you're you're self-stimulating yourself okay but what you want to try to do is begin to focus that energy. You want to be able to direct that energy. You want to be able to transfer that energy into something different. And one of the things that we get to do is to transfer it onto paper, okay? Into paper, onto paper, through our pencil, through our brush. You know, the, the warmth of... Um, The energy that goes through our hands when we're creating and we feel it captured in the wood of the pencil, in the wood of the brush, in the, in the, in the wood basically of the paper or the canvas, the, 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 the fibers of the canvas. You can feel that energy transferring from you into that space and, and, and it's in there. And those marks are the evidence that there was energy and thought, first thought, then energy, um, 
that was being released into that space through that, uh, through that tool. And so I want to encourage you guys that as you, you know, rather than talking about what you want or your ideas, put energy and effort behind a pencil and put that out there, you know, get to work, put effort. Um, And so Picasso, he did that a lot. Like, he, you know, and sometimes he went through these stages where he wasn't really designing or composing and just producing a lot of crap, okay? And then he would go through these stages where he was just like a master, you know? And he had the right to do that. He had the right to explore because he wasn't sitting around just philosophizing about ideas. He was actually thinking through his canvas, thinking through his brush, thinking through his pencil, okay? And I'm going to share a painting with you, uh, well, actually more of a drawing with you, that shows how he thinks, at least one aspect of it. Um, like I said, this one's slightly sexual in nature. The next video is definitely going to be sexual in nature, so be very, very uh, aware. Uh, if that offends you, then don't watch. Uh, if it turns you on, keep that to yourself. Uh, but it's going to be fun. Um, so let me get into the work here. Let me show you what Picasso is doing with this piece. All right, so episode 30. When I saw this drawing, I was just blown away. Uh, and there's so many wonderful things that are going on in this image. And see, you have to remember as a cubist, uh, what Picasso was trying to do, the theory of cubism, is how do you get to see multiple sides of, of, a, of, a, of a form but at the same time. So he was trying to actually, through his art, get us to experience the fourth dimension, a sense of timelessness where you could, you know, I can see the front of you, the side of you, the back of you, the top of you, underneath you, all at the same time. If you were a chair, I could see the front of the chair where I would sit, I would see the back of the chair, but see the side of the chair, the bottom of the chair, the top of the chair, all of these at the same time. And when you begin to allow your mind to really push those concepts and still design and compose so that you actually have an elegant and beautiful piece of work, that's, that's, that requires a lot of mental effort, a lot of mental energy. And rather than wasting it talking about it, he would talk through his pencil. He would talk through his brush. And this is why he had so much work, because he was a thinker. And then he would draw and paint it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this um, image here. Obvious, obviously, it is a nude figure. Picasso, very, let's just say, Passionate man, loved the ladies. The ladies loved Picasso. And, um, and, and what Picasso is doing here is he wants to see, now this isn't about the mind of a woman, okay? If you're a feminist and that offends you, do something with it. But... This has nothing to do with the brilliance of a woman, the soul of a woman. This has to do with her body and the worship of her body, okay? And so he wants us to look at all the different parts of her body, but all at the same time. And so... I highlight in this one the breasts. Beautiful, wonderfully round, perky, whatever you want to call them. And he puts them, you know, 
right there for us to see. Then he composes out the pubic area. And again, very elegantly, extremely elegantly. I mean, this image is just gorgeous. This woman is just beautiful. Now, it's very possible that Picasso and I have very, same, very similar taste in ladies. Maybe you don't think she's beautiful. Maybe you think her butt's too big. And uh, maybe you think her breasts are too big or too small. Maybe you don't think she has enough fro downstairs. Maybe you like that it's bald. Um, maybe you think her nose is too big, if that's her nose. It depends on how you actually look at it. It could look like a big nose, or it could look like um, her eye in the side, in two sides of her face. I personally like big noses on girls, to be quite honest. I've always have. I don't know why. I just always have. Um, so to me, I look at this, and I just see an amazingly attractive and beautiful woman. Um, now, I showed you the breast and I showed you the pubic region because the next two places are, in my, my uh, assessment, the more, the, the, how do I say, the more beautiful places, okay? I am definitely a pale man. I love hair, long black hair on a woman. Oh, God, it's just gorgeous. And obviously, Mr. Picasso, uh, shares that same proclivity. Um, and we have the hair coming down through here, wrapping up through uh, the other side of her. And I just find that gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Um, the next area that he wants us to focus on, oops, whoa, what's this? Oh yes, the booty. So what, what happens here, and it's funny, well, I'll, I'll get to the next the next air, um, slide. But uh, when I was looking up the work of Picasso, I ended up coming across this image, and um, I just thought it was just a beautiful, very quick, simple little sketch. Um, it looks like she's kind of pouting, or maybe upset, or I don't know something. I don't know why she's just laying there naked. Um, a little short hair. How dare him. Um, but what I found beautiful was in here you can see the elegance of these curves. And he's just playing and, and worshipping, if you will, the curves of, the, of this woman. And here he's sitting at, the, at, the, at her feet. Now what's interesting is I saw this and I didn't you know, I was like, oh, man, look at that guy. I was like, man, Picasso and I are just, like, so similar in this sense. Uh, I just saw the hand laying on the woman's butt and just thought, wow, what affection. What what affection. He's he's connected to her. He's not all up on her, right, even though she's laying there naked. And he's just sitting and connecting with her. Maybe she is hurt, you know, emotionally. Um, I don't really know the story. Uh, if I was going to say anything, I don't know why she'd be naked in this sense. Well, maybe it would make sense because if maybe the nakedness represents that she's just bare, you know, she's not hiding anything. Um, even like the hair is not covering her. She's just bare, naked, raw. And the flowers are down here. I, I don't know what they represent. I almost get the sense like this has to do with death of some sort. Um, the grieving of something. And he's just sitting there with his little with his hand on her butt and uh, just a very, you know, just connecting at, at that, that base level. And so I saw this. I'm like, man, that's so cool. You know, I love that Picasso just sitting at the foot of this one with his hand on her butt. And, uh, and then I look at the name of the painting, and it's Picasso sitting at the base, at the foot, at the, at the, the foot of a woman. And I was just like, "That's so cool!" So it, this is like a little self-portrait of him. And um, I really wish I would have known the guy. I, I think him and I would have probably got along pretty, pretty well. 
Um, so we come back to this to this drawing, and what I love is the curves of of the butt. But what I like even more is how it rolls straight into the back. And so we get to see her back, we get to see her breast, we get to see her pelvis, we, we get to see the curves of her legs and, and the, the, the hips. We get to see her arms bent and her hair folded uh, up underneath her like hair. It's just, it's just amazing. Your eye just moves through all of these wonderful places, uh, wonderful places on, on a woman. And um, I, I know for me personally, I'm a back guy as well. Uh, I remember many, 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 <laughs> many years ago, uh, I, I was just enamored by this girl's back, you know, and she thought, she thought it was weird, you know, in a sense. Um, and because uh, she, she never really was appreciated, you know, uh, to, that, to that level. And um, just this gorgeous back, you know, just wanted to draw and paint it. And, uh, and so one day about, you know, we, we separated and a couple of years later, she calls me. She's like, I'm with this guy. And I notice his back and I finally understand what you're talking about. And so <laughs> it was kind of funny. Um, but, uh, you know, I... I Obviously, we didn't create the back, you know, nature did, God did, evolution did, whatever did, did. And I just, just find it so beautiful. So much um, about the female form that's just gorgeous. So this is, uh, I, I love this piece because it's just a celebration of the female. And again, it's not celebrating her mind and her soul and her power and her strength, which is all true in a woman and, and, and needs to be um, uh, acknowledged and, and appreciated. But this is just the appreciation of a woman physically. And um, it's gorgeous. Very cool. So the last thing I want to share, share with you is when you look at the original here, you can see this underdrawing, this, these sketch lines flowing through and, and it's really beautiful. I mean, if you look at the breast here, you can kind of see, I, I, I traced over the line so that you can see it. You can see where the nipple is, there's like a little line, it's like a little V, you know, cause he's, he's blocking in the block of the breast. It's just not, he's not just drawing circles. They're, they're not circles. They're actually um, curves with straight lines and then curves because he's trying to give it form. Uh, a circle doesn't give you form. On the back of her butt, you can see that's a straight line that gives you form. You feel the blockness of it. Like if there was a light shining on it, there were, you could you could kind of get a sense of where the high where that light would be, and over here would be shadow. And down here through the legs, you can see um, right here where if there was light coming through here, this would be this would collect the light. This would be in shadow. Back here, the light would be back here, and this would be in shadow. So it would be light, dark, light, dark. It would have a rhythm to it. And so he's putting in that information, but then ultimately not taking it because he doesn't need all that information. He's editing it down. He keeps editing and editing and editing it. And so it just becomes this little elegance and, and gracefulness uh, without all of this extra stuff. And... and um, but you can see how the hair flows up through here and then back through and then comes up through the breast. And look at from the, uh, the, from the, from the, from the crack here in the butt that comes up right into the back. So the crack into the back, it's kind of funny. Um, the pelvis here, you can almost feel like a little cushy, you know? Uh, right there and then you can even see a little line coming up through here where the leg would come up up there um, but you see the the the, um, the pelvis here it isn't just two straight lines there's actually like a little bend in there okay so it's just this little slight bend in there 
And that allows an enclosure to happen, which then allows us to feel the thickness of it, the, the weight of it. Um, and so all of this stuff is thought, you know, and rather than going out talking about or this or that, he's, he's putting that energy into his canvas. He's pushing those thoughts out through a pencil. And see, every mark you make is a thought. It's a thought. So, like, this is why, you know, when you're drawing, you want to try to make one mark. If it's, then the mark becomes, uh, it shows that you're insecure about the mark. You're not secure. You're not confident. You don't know where you're starting. You don't know where you're going. You haven't made that commitment to it, and you haven't, push that energy in one constant steady flow, right? You haven't calculated what the cost of that thing is. And so you get nervous and you start to shake your hand and now you have a line that's all fuzzy and broken and disgusting. His lines are gorgeous. He knows what he wants. He commits to it. And then he executes it. Bam, bam, bam. I, I really, really like this image. Well, then we have the uh, public, public Guide to Reading Art. Volume 1 is out, uh, 7 bucks. If you go to books.core80.com, you can go ahead and pick it up. Um, Christmas is coming up soon, and uh, even though if it is Christmas or not Christmas and you want to you know, share this with somebody, go give them a gift, simple little $7 gift. Um, and they're going to get to look at uh, the slides that, that I'm providing here. Um, they're going to be able to click on the link and, and watch the corresponding videos. And then I actually then go in and write a little blurb uh, for each slide in there as well. And so, yeah, seven bucks, books.core80.com. And, uh, and I want to thank you. Um, for all your purchases of that. And that is today's show. Okay, episode 30, done. Picasso, brilliant Picasso. Ciao.